Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas uh, with another explication request. Uh, you can send your explication request to explication request at guruexamprep.com. Uh, dollar cost averaging is on every exam, SIE, uh, Series 6, Series 7, 65, 66. You know, I always joke, even if you had full registration, the Series 7, and you told your manager, I know I have a Series 7, but it is okay if I just sell mutual funds. Most managers would say that would be wonderful. You know, more people get where they're going without crashing and burning and the investment vehicle, mutual fund, than other any other investment vehicle. Now, if you can combine that mutual fund with dollar cost averaging, that's really cool. You know, dollar cost averaging, test question, or three test questions about dollar cost averaging, what makes it work, fixed dollars invested regularly. So, you know, you give me $100 a month, for example, you know, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. You're combining a savings, savings discipline with a little bit of investment risk. And by investing fixed dollars invested regularly, you'll be doing exactly what you should be doing, which is buying more shares when they're low and less shares when they're high. You know, it's just like a grocery store, right? If they kept marking up the price, you'd probably cut back on your purchases. It's only in the securities industry that people feel more comfortable buying at higher and higher prices, right? So this enforces that discipline upon you to be doing exactly what you should doing. It also makes sense to invest in drips and drabs because that's how most people get money. You know, most people don't get, you know, $100,000 to drop into the stock market, but a lot of people give me $50 a month, $100 a month, whatever the case may be. The second test question is that you end up with a lower average cost than those of the underlying shares. And I'd be prepared to do a simple average of that uh, on the test. Uh, so here they're not asking you to do the math. They're just kind of asking what is the end result of dollar cost averaging. And then our final test question about dollar cost averaging is it doesn't guarantee a profit. You know, there's two nasty words in the securities industry we never use, and there's our guarantee and, uh, you know, prove. We just don't say those kind of things. Uh, if you want to hear the word guarantee, you need to talk to a, a banker about a banking product or an insurance agent on insurance products, securities products have no guarantee. Now, outside of uh, FINRA NASA, you know, testing fantasy land, where you get to leave once you pass, I'm stuck here permanently, no wonder I'm demented. You'd be hard pressed to convince me that over any lengthy period, particularly if you think there's an upward bias to the economy and you think about professional management and a diversified portfolio of securities, that perhaps this would not play out. But on the desk, we say, doesn't guarantee a profit. In fact, they might even show you an illustration where, you know, maybe it's six months in, a hundred bucks a month, or two years in, or three years in, uh, they end up with a, a an account that has less of a value than they've invested. All right, so now let's answer the question. An advantage of dollar cost averaging is that it results in an average cost per share less than the stock's average price. Well, that's exactly right. Now that's test question number two, right? Assuming which of the following. So now they're asking about the assumptions. The price of the underlying shares fluctuates. Exactly right. That's the point of what's making it work is we're buying less shares when they're high and more shares when they're low. So one is true. A set number of shares is purchased regularly. No. You know, my example of I'm giving you $100, so you're giving me $100 a month to put in that mutual fund, you know, depending on the NAV, will depend on how many shares you're getting. So two is false. A set dollar amount is invested regularly. That two is true. So one and three is true. And so the answer here, let's put that there, is one and three. Now, for your own edification, if this was a NASA exam, well, then the multiples are in play because they do on NASA exams have multiples of multiples. On FINRA exams, they do not have multiples of multiples. So they might say in a FINRA exam, all well, the following are true of dollar cost averaging except, right? Whenever there's three of a thing like there is here, that's kind of the format we should be prepared for. All right. Well, I hope you found that helpful. I can't imagine any draw in which you don't get asked about dollar cost averaging. You might even have to do practical application. What I mean by that is do some math, come up with the average cost of the shares versus the average share price. Uh, you might even have to do that as well. So remember, uh, inch by inch, your exam's a sense. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. 
and I'll see you for the next explication request.